Hello to all my fellow introverts out there. This video is for you. Now being an introvert myself, I know that it can be very difficult to take part in the process of street photography because the definition of being an introvert is someone who typically enjoys being alone and is much more introspective, not the kind of person who loves engaging with the outside world. Having said that, you can't always be that person who sits in your bedroom making YouTube videos. So it is with this video that I want to give you some tips and advice to get shooting on the streets and making some of those photos you see on Instagram or on YouTube channels and hopefully taking away the anxiety of taking street photography. So I've come up with five bits of advice to help you navigate the world of street photography. So the first bit of advice I'd like to give you is take photos of objects, things, detail, not of people. Don't go in like a bull in a china shop. I do think as an introvert you could really deter yourself if you have an interaction that could somewhat put you off forever. Remember, not everyone loves having their photo taken in public. Street photography can be a very sensitive subject. So go out and take pictures of buildings, flowers, shadows, practice using the light. Maybe even go and take pictures of animals like cats. Any animal that can be a little less attached to their owner is always a good subject to take a photo of. Also, reflections are fantastic because if you do want to go out and take pictures of people, you can do this by taking a picture of a reflection in a window and you can grab really great shots by using this technique. And you're not fully taking a picture of someone, but you're kind of indirectly taking a picture. Like I said, gives it a kind of interest to the photograph, but also removes any anxiety from having an interaction. For all they know, you're just taking a photo of a, of a window. So yeah, reflections are a great one. Using water, car bonnets are very good. Anything like that, you can really have a lot of fun with and I think uh, come up with some interesting images as a standalone project. My second bit of advice is go out with a friend. It can be really daunting going out on your own. You're definitely going to get a fair few looks if you go out on your own and you're maybe hovering around taking photos of people in a certain spot for long enough. People may be a bit kind of suspicious of what you're up to. But if you're with someone, you can chat, make light of a situation. It's all about you as an introvert because you will be in your head when you're making photography. The idea about this is making it easier for you to take photos on the street, alleviating any anxiety that you have while taking photos. If you can laugh about it with a friend, you just want to have a buffer to kind of get you, you know, started. But I also think this is a great tip if you just want to, um, you know, bounce ideas off someone and see how they're taking photos. It is good to go out with a friend who takes photos, especially if they're extrovert, you can kind of bounce off them and use their energy to kind of elevate you and, and maybe be a bit more bold. I definitely had that experience with a friend of mine um, recently and I was able to get some fantastic shots just because I knew, you know, he was doing it too and it felt in my head, it was all about being in my head, felt more comfortable. Okay, so this bit of advice is kind of um, if you're really starting out and you're really quite nervous. Look, we all have a camera in our pockets now and maybe the best bit of advice if you are starting out is just use your phone. I have the iPhone 15 Pro and that camera is actually at times fantastic. It can, it can outperform in some situations some of my other cameras. But this video is all about alleviating any stress on the street and practicing getting in the flow and the normality of taking photos of people and situations and scenes. So practice with the smallest bit of gear you've got, whether it's an iPhone or another smartphone that you might have. The camera size is very important when you're starting off and you're feeling very shy. I've just made a video actually about the Ricoh GR3X. 
that is a fantastic camera for street photography and I really feel if you have a camera like that over something like the X-H2S or a Canon R6 or what was that Pete McKinnon camera that he had yeah I mean that one's massive you're gonna feel like the paparazzi or something so um, <laughs> you want to minimize your gear keep it small keep it street you want to feel like you're not invading people's privacy and space you want to feel a bit like a spy really without feeling creepy now I don't know if anyone can relate with this tip but I do think that being in a foreign country has helped my experience with street photography immensely again this is all about being in one's head and I have found shooting on the streets of the UK, which is obviously where I'm from, much more difficult than in Thailand, Vietnam, Spain, uh, France, you know, most of Europe. I guess I feel like a tourist and that I'll soon be leaving and I'm grabbing shots because, uh, you know, I'm visiting. It's a, it's a different perspective. If I am... Um, in the UK I guess I feel like a local and a native and just again in my head it feels a bit weird that I'd be taking photos of where I'm from now to a lot of people this might not make any sense and I appreciate that but for some people out there I think this could resonate so maybe take a short trip to Barcelona or you know I know a lot of people from the US actually watch my channel I, I think a densely populated place can actually be sometimes a little bit more preferred I know shooting London actually weirdly enough um, although although very intimidating at times can feel a little less strained because there's so many people you know if you're somewhere where it's less populated I do I actually believe that that can be much trickier so like my local city is only a kind of population of 250,000 and on a quiet day you can definitely you, you want to be inconspicuous that's what I'm trying to say and I think the more inconspicuous you feel within a country a location the more you're likely to shoot especially like I said if you're on your own and so one of the last tips I have for you is to wear sunglasses. I think someone told me this and it's obviously just information that's been passed down from one person to the other. But wearing sunglasses in public definitely alleviates some of that stress of being seen. As they say, your eyes give you away. And if they're dottering around looking for subjects and you're pacing thinking, oh, this is a great shot. I can see, you know, like... Uh, a street vendor kind of making something I want to take a photo of this but I don't know what to do if you're casually walking past and you have your sunglasses on and you can uh, you can just judge the area better um, I do think it's, it's a bit it's a tiny bit like having a, an invisible cloak but for the eyes you can just kind of skate the area a bit more and I think this has helped me a considerable amount being on the street uh, so yeah that's my last piece of advice I, th I think that that one could possibly help now being an introvert is different for everyone there are levels to this I know there is the absolute nervous wreck of an introvert who struggles to even step out let alone take a camera onto the streets and there is you know a very competent introvert who has worked on themselves to being much more extroverted but let's be honest it's still pretty introverted because the whole game of this is that it's in your mind if it was a life or death situation I said go and take a picture of someone on the street right up their face you would go do it in a heartbeat it's the fact that you're in your head and you're thinking what they might think and what they might say and if there's an altercation and if you upset someone and it's it's a real mind boggle it's all between the eyes um, it's that's where the battle is with this and if you can get to a place where you can sort of quiet that noise do it enough be more consistent you're gonna make the photos you want to make and it will be an easier practice having done this for a little while now I've had altercations I've had people definitely give me the eye as to say what are you doing please don't take a photo of me 
Um, so always be respectful. I'm not breaking any laws, though. Uh, if you're on the street, you know, you're in the public domain. And for photographers, you know, this is a contentious issue. And I know lots of people have talked about this. Is it ethical or not? You know, if someone asked, could you delete that photo? I would obviously do that. I don't want to upset anyone. What I'm trying to do is document um, my life and the life around me and capture interesting images. You know, that's as far as it goes. I don't really want to know the backstory of, you know, of someone's whole history when I take their photo. I just, I'm documenting as I go. I hope this video has helped. I'm kind of sweating having produced this one. A weird topic um, for me because talking about something I feel very, um, you know, uh, insecure about a little bit. So uh, it's, you know, it's always hard turning up on video, giving my thoughts, knowing that there's going to be feedback about certain videos. I just want to let you know out there, I completely relate and understand, um, you know, where you're at if you're really struggling with this, because I've been there. And hopefully some of these steps and these this advice in this video have can and will help. Anyway, if you've got any questions, anything to know, leave it in the comments below. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. I'll always try to get back to you if I can. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.